Hey guys, welcome back to a very exciting cannon fodder. Well, for me at least. This week's highlight is the all-new article on the Scarab, one that addresses many inconsistencies with the model numbers and types that we've seen throughout the franchise. Of course, that's at the end, so let's dive into everything else so we can get to the juicy stuff. After what can only be described as a teaser for what's to come, the second section of the article is our first Chatternet, a section that highlights you and me, the members of the community. Grim asks a question and posts selected answers given by the community. Last week's question was about favorite armor sets, and boy were there a number of responses. Seven pages, in fact. It's a daunting task to read through them all, but extremely interesting. If you aren't up for such a task, though, you can read the ones that Grimm selected for the article. The diversity of opinion never ceases to amaze me. Personally, I don't know if I could ever select a single favorite. There are just too many awesome armor sets. Maybe the Mark V-B or Gungnir? It's, it's, it's hard to pick. <laughs> How about you guys? What's your favorite armor set? Moving forward, the next section drops some teasers about armor sets we'll be seeing in Halo 5. No images, but the descriptions leave a lot to the imagination. Spartans describe the Fenrir's embedded battle management AI as efficient, responsive, and bloodthirsty in equal measure. Rarely seen outside of Oni, Argonaut users must undergo an extensive synchronization process to train the suit's move-by-wire reflex enhancers. Built to Spartan branch requirements for ship and station defense personnel, Security Armor seamlessly integrates with Navy networks and security constructs. Fenrir, the great wolf of Norse mythology and the one destined to kill Odin during Ragnarok, and Argonaut, the designation of Jason's forces during his quest for the Golden Fleece. And then Security, an armor variant last seen in Halo Reach, based on the Mark V cyborg from Bungie's Marathon games. It'll be interesting to see 343's take on the armor. Our last section announces a Halo panel that will be at San Diego Comic-Con on Friday. No word on whether it will be broadcast live, but that's never really been the case in the past. More than likely, us common folk will have to wait for it to be posted on YouTube. At which point, of course, I'll be sure to give a comprehensive breakdown. The article itself closes with a tease of what's to come in the weeks ahead. An interview with Peter David, author of Halo Hunters in the Dark, and a look at the development of Hunt the Truth. Both have me excited for the month of July, as if I didn't have enough reasons already. And with that, we come to our Universe articles. This week we have the Ultra Heavy Assault Platform, or Scarab, and the Type 52 Infantry Support Vehicle, or Brute Prowler. As mentioned earlier, the highlight this week is the Scarab, and for damn good reason. This is the article me and several lore fans have been waiting for, so let's take a look. Mentioned in the Cannon Fodder article is the fact that five Scarabs were deployed to the city of New Mombasa during the opening skirmish on October 20th. This was first mentioned in the short story Palace Hotel from Halo Evolutions, though that detail somehow slipped under my radar. It's further hinted that the Scarab we see in the Spartan Strike simulation is one of the other four that the Chief didn't destroy. Strange, as it seems to be standing in for the one that we did see in Halo 2, but I digress. Indeed, looking back at the bottom of page 363 in the original print copy, they mention two scarabs in the city proper, and another three among the outskirts. I have to wonder if some of these were the ones we encountered in ODST, or if all of those were brought by the support fleet. Anyway, back to the scarabs article. Scarabs are gigantic walker platforms that are driven by huge Lickolo colonies. Interestingly, it's noted that while most have a secondary cannon mounted on the rear, some have communication and proselytization arrays. Think about that second word. Proselytization means to convert someone to an ideology or cause. I'd be interested to see what a proselytization array looks like. Moving forward, we get a bit of insight into the various types of excavation vehicles. According to Covenant Records, there are nine tiers of excavators, organized based on size, digging efficiency, and delicacy. The Scarabs are Tier 4, Harvesters are Tier 5, and a Locust is Tier 1. I shudder to think what a Tier 9 excavator might look like, or worse, what it's capable of. Finally, the Pièce de Résistance, the Scarab classifications. We start with the T-29 Ultra Heavy Sight Excavator, this being the Super Scarab from Halo Wars. Due to the sheer size and the delicacy of its components, it has to be assembled on the ground. Delicacy? I don't really recall it being too delicate in Halo Wars. Anyway, the article notes that based on Covenant records, it is assumed that the Type 29 is based on an ancient design and used only for excavating particularly monumentous reliquaries. Next up is the Type 36 Ultra Heavy Siege Platform, a variant we have yet to see in the games. It's noted that this variant uses a variety of chassis designs, but it's noted for its Class 4 Plasma Cannon, similar to what we see with the Mantis Platform, and the homogeneous performance characteristics. 
I can't help but wonder if this might be canonizing some of the Scarab concepts seen in the art of Halo 3, or perhaps it's indicative of something we'll see in Halo 5. I can't wait to find out. Finally, we have the Type 47 Ultra Heavy Assault Platform, of which there are two varieties. Though both types were encountered throughout the war, some reports indicating as far back as 2527, these Scarabs were never classified until 2547. I'd love to hear some of the stories behind these delayed classifications. First, we have the T-47 Deuteros, almost literally, second Scarab. This is the type we see in Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, and the main type seen in Halo Wars. Then we have the T-47 Protos, or first Scarab. This is the type we see in Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary. As fans have speculated for years, the Protos is designed primarily for artifact excavation rather than combat. So that brings to a close the article on the Scarab and brings us to the Prowler. There isn't too much to say about the Prowler that we don't already know, but for real world trivia, the design is based on the look of an anglerfish. Scary motherfuckers. Well, thanks for joining me for an exciting cannon fodder. Stay tuned later this week as Halo Cannon and the Halo Archive bring back a long forgotten series, multiplayer map lore. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I could express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.